Hey everybody, I've got a blockbuster bit of news here, so let's get right to it. I'm going to read my prepared text, which is also in the description of this live stream vlog. And it goes like this. Now that the Oakland A's relocation to Las Vegas has been approved, Oakland A's fans are finally waking up to the many problems with how Oakland government did not correctly handle its role in the failed development of Howard Terminal Ballpark. But what no one is asking is how the Fisher family, owners of the Oakland A's, managed to gain negotiating control of Howard Terminal Ballpark and the Oakland Coliseum at the same time. This was done via a document you're about to see right here. This one. Yes, this one. And it is dated May 17th, 2018. It was the Oakland City Council resolution that gave the Oakland A's a unique dual exclusive negotiating agreement ENA position where it could form development plans for both land areas, the Coliseum and the Howard and Howard Terminal. The result was a dual plan unveiled October 11th of 2019, you know, at the Rooted on Oakland website that presented the big architect's Howard Terminal design and a plan for the Coliseum that featured a demolished Coliseum Stadium. Remember that? And the Oakland Arena surrounded by new office buildings, primarily. But the A's Fisher plan was designed to sell various parts of the Coliseum property to other developers to have them build new structures in those demarcated areas, you know, land office here, R&D over there, but retaining the arena, all right? And so, in effect, in effect, this is what was going on. And you could say, what does this read? And I will read it for you right now, real, real quick. This reads as follows. Resolution affirming that the Oakland A's, excuse me, that's the wrong one. I'm sorry. Um, let me get the right one. That's what happens when you are, uh, this is the right one. Okay, that's the right one. Okay, now you see that? That's the right one. And it should, let me stop the screen here and then share the right one here. This is the one that you can see has, as you can, excuse me, as you can I guess you see, <laughs> has up there, see the date has the right timestamp, 18 May 17th. In other words, 18th of May, 2018, May 17th is what it reads. All right, so resolution right here, right there. Now, and if you, if you say, wait a minute, Zinni, are you sure it's 2017, 18? Look over to the extreme right where it reads, Revised Council 5, 15, 2018. That date, that 2018, folks, that year is extremely important, okay? Is extremely important. Now, let me finish reading to you, reading to you what this says. 2018 is extremely important. Now, it reads, Resolution authorizing an exclusive negotiating agreement with the Athletics Investment Group, LLC, or affiliated entity for development of a ballpark and ancillary development at the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum Complex site, accepting and appropriating a project expense payment an exclusive negotiating fee in connection with the agreement and accepting and appropriating a project expense payment for possible development of a ballpark and other development at Howard Terminal 
within the port area. Then you have the whereases. Whereas the city and county own a joint approximately 112 acres of land, whereas the Coliseum Complex is a potential site for a potential new Major League Baseball par park with additional de development, whereas the city and athletics investment group desired into a, an ENA over development of, of a project at the Coliseum Complex, whereas an ENA between the city and the and the Oakland Athletics will allow the parties to enter into a, enter into a period of the preliminary study and negotiations or a possible disposition of the Coliseum Complex in development of a project on the site. Understand that this does not in, constitute a binding commitment on the part of the city or the county to any developer or project. And whereas a condition of this ENA shall require the Oakland A's provide a project expense payment in an amount to be determined for the purpose of cutting city's costs, like project and administrative staffing consultants, all that eventually add up to $8 million, okay? And then it goes on to the port and discusses the port's ENA and dis discusses the Howard Terminal project within the port area because that was the port area at the time. Remember, March 22nd of, Mar March 22nd of 2022, the ownership, the rights the, of development rights were shifted from the port to the city of Oakland for Howard Terminal. All right. At this point, it was within the port's control. Okay. So it gives you all these other re resolutions. And then it says further, further resolve that the city council hereby authorizes the city administrator or his or her designee to negotiate and execute documents and take all their actions necessary with respect to this ENA and along with the fees for both the Coliseum Complex and the Howard Terminal site, consistent with the resolution and its basic purposes. So this set up the dual ENA that the Fisher family had, all right? Dual ENA. One, the Fisher family, you would say, how did that happen? How did they get that? And what I write in the text is that, again, I explain how the Rooted in Oakland website really showed the world what they intended to do. In effect, having two new office development complexes, one in East Oakland at the Coliseum and one and the other near Jack London Square at Howard Terminal. The Fishers were given the key to Oakland's economic development future. But the question is why? Okay, why? How did that happen, and why did the ENA come down in 2018? The Fisher's control may have been and looks like it was bought via donations to Mayor Schaap's Oakland Promise nonprofit corporation and program, which happened the same year, okay? And so at this point, I will present to you what Ken Epstein wrote in the Oakland Post at the time under this, but it's also backed by documents, donation documents for the Oakland Promise in 2018, but not released in 2018. Ken didn't release this until 2020, 2022, excuse me. Yeah, last year. Billionaire John Fisher linked to privatization of schools in Port of Oakland. Now, Ken doesn't make the connection here that I'm making, all right? He, at all, at all. He just talks about how they're billionaires and he wants the privatization of schools and that Libby favors Howard Terminal. But he doesn't paint the picture of a quid pro quo because he didn't line up that the fact that the years of these transactions took that took place where... He, both in 2018, even though it's in his, let me get this, okay, even though it's in his article, all right, it's in his article and points to sources that bring us back to 2018. So in other words, at the, the same year that Libby was had engineered donor nations by the Fisher family for Oakland Promise, she had fashioned a dual control ENA 
at the behest of STEM and got the council to back her on it. All right. And so under the idea of saving the athletics and getting all of this development activity and perhaps something else for the council members behind the scenes, I don't have proof of that, but I do have this. So what Ken wrote in this, all right, and I will scroll down to the area that I highlight in the document is all the way down here. Okay. And it is right here, starting with donations right there. And I will read to you what I wrote in what you're reading the description. All right. It reads simply that these donations were first reported publicly in the Oakland Promise Annual Report for 2018 and in a news article in the Oakland Post's Oakland's African-American-owned news publication. And here's where I call them Jeffrey Epstein, mistakenly it's Ken Epstein. Sorry, Ken, I know Ken personally. Uh, Oakland Post reporter wrote in the Oakland Post of February 14th, 2022. And I quote, donations to Oakland Promise in 2018 by Fisher, no, 2018, by Fisher, and Fisher-owned organizations include between 50,000 and 100,000 from the Oakland Athletics, between 10,000 and 25,000 from the Fisher family, and between 10,000 and 25,000 from the Silicon Schools Fund. Other charter school billionaires supporting Oakland Promise in 2018 were Arthur Rock, between 1 million and 3 million, Rogers Family, between 100,000 and 1 million, Reed Hastings of Hastings Fund, you know, LinkedIn, Silicon Valley, between 100,000 and 1 million, a locally based pro charter schools organization, Educate 78, donated between 100,000 and 1 million. And Ken continues to write, Schaff is on board with Fisher's agenda in a KQED television interview on February 4th, she offered, quote, full throttle support of Fisher's multi-billion dollar real estate development at the port, she said, quote, this is everything that I as mayor could want. Schaff was also, this is Ken writing, unequivocal in her support for closing 15 Oakland neighborhood schools she said that Oakland had has 80 schools while comparable districts have 40 schools, implying she supported closing as many as half the public schools in her city. Quote, I really feel for parents, students, and teachers, she said. Quote, they have every right to be distrustful of this decision, but I believe it is different this time. This is an opportunity to do better for our students, for our educators, our families. And now that's the end of my quoting Ken. And I write this because the donations were not reported in real time for public view in such a way as to make a fast connection between the Oakland promise and the rush through dual ENA for John Fisher. No one was able to make a connection between the two actions that would have raised flags. Got it. But now it's clear that Mayor Schaaf made a giant deal to help a political ally, John Fisher. The arrangement just happening just a year after the 2017 March 27th NFL meeting that gave the Raiders the green light to leave the Coliseum for Las Vegas. And just before Mayor Schaffer was reelected mayor of Oakland, November, 2018 calls into question if Mayor Schaffer was really interested in retaining the Raiders in Oakland at the Coliseum. Did Mayor Schaaf set this up to leave Oakland all for the Fisher family at the expense of Mark Davis, the Raider owner? And what and was what Mayor Schaaf did legal? All right. And did the A's intend to leave Oakland because Lauren Taylor, her handpicked successor, lost the 2022 mayoral election to Shang Tao? And did Mayor Tao, Carol Fife, District 3 Council Member, Nikki Fortunato Bass, our District 2 Council Member, and Oakland Vice Mayor 
and at large council member Rebecca Kaplan plot together to make the Fisher family pay even more money in the form of affordable housing and community benefits and deliberately avoided implementing the promised tax increment financing zone. These are questions that have to be asked. From this vlogger's opinion and perspective, it does appear so, okay? And so I'm putting this out there to say that this is a, a big fat mess. And for those of you who are wondering why I keep yelling about Oakland government and A's fans not paying attention, now you see a classic example of what I'm talking about. This was happened in your collective faces. I'm the only person in the media sphere here in Oakland, the only one, okay? The only one who first asked the question, why are we giving Oakland's economic development future to John Fisher? But at the time I asked the question, I didn't have this information regarding Oakland Promise. And these reports are not put out in exact real time where you can say on the same day, oh, hey, this was done and then this was done, all right? That's not how it happens. So uh, let me get to your comment. Uh, Al Cabo says, uh, Zinni, do you think that if Lauren Taylor won the mayoral election, the A's wouldn't have left Oakland? That was the idea. Lauren went out campaigning himself and said that essentially he is Oakland's last best chance to retain the A's. Now we understand what Lauren was talking about because aside, he, he was the target of Libby's political donational wealth. In other words, the number of contacts she amassed that she would then steer toward her favorite candidates, most notably Lauren Taylor among others. All right. And so, yeah, that was the idea. Eric Sterling, Eric, how Eric says, Hello, Zinni. I hate to say you were right about everything. I guess I was still holding out hope. Maybe there was a chance. I'm really teed off. Now, can the city sue the A's for anything? No. That's what I kept saying to anybody who wouldn't listen. No. Not at all. Because when you start digging at this, all right, the city looks bad on a number of fronts. Foremost among them, they can't say they didn't know the athletics were trying to move to Las Vegas. Major League Baseball gave them the green light. The commissioner said so several times. Officially, he said it on May 31st of 2021. Then in 2022, Early on in January, he said, I'm tired of asking questions about Oakland. All right. And he said that he said that that on any number of occasions, even after Mayor Tao had met, met with him during the All-Star game after that, he was keen to close any conversation about Oakland. Uh, Zach asks, Zinni, do you think schools over stadiums will advance in court? No. I've said, and I've said so before, and I'll say so ag again. And here's a simple reason, Zach. That document they wrote, the press release with the questions on it, treats the entire matter as if it were a tax levy plan, and it proves they don't understand municipal finance. So they're going to get their blankety blanks handed to them in court. I can see that coming. All right, because every point they refer to regarding a, an article refers to the levy of a tax on people. This bond issue is not a levy of a tax on the people of Clark County or Nevada. It isn't that at all. It is a bond issue and a tax credit. The bond issue is a lease revenue bond issue with its with pledged revenues. Those revenues only activated for anybody that happens to buy something in any facility 
within the sports entertainment district boundaries that are established, all right, within the property. That's it, okay? That's it, and particularly within the ballpark. So it proves that they were in such haste to get something out that they didn't think it through. But it also points to the possibility that they knew they weren't being thorough in their thinking, and they did something just to file a nuisance lawsuit and nothing else. And if they keep doing it, they could be the focus of a slap lawsuit to get them to stop. And you know, they don't want that. I don't, I would hope no one, you know, with a brain actually wants something like that to happen. Zach says, uh, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you. And happy Thanksgiving, everybody. He says, and, and when do you think the renderings of the new ballpark will come out? Oh, uh, I would, you know, I don't, I would think it'd be any day now, perhaps tomorrow. I think that they are evaluating both plans or trying to figure out not just who to, which one to go with. They Well, they've already made that decision. I'm sorry. They're probably planning a big to do with different celebrities and in, in a, a big announcement or rollout. It's a big deal to say, hey, look, I'm going to build a ballpark here in a city that's never had Major League Baseball. So I'm not going to just show the rendering. I'm going to show you and have a ceremony, a big party and event, what this looks like. So they, it could very well be a few days now. It could, they could wait until the 14th of December when the Las Vegas Stadium Authority meets. I don't know. I, I would be surprised if it wasn't this week, but the longer it drags on, the more it points to the December 14th Las Vegas Stadium Authority meeting. I've got Andy Dolich in seven minutes. Uh, I can't wait. Thank you, Zinni. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Thank you, um, Zach. Eric says, uh, I know you didn't like how local media handled the A's problem with the city. Now I hear the city is trying to use the lease agreement to secure the A's name. Uh, good luck. So, I mean, my whole point is the city is such that we produce the same people. It doesn't matter. It's like shifting deck chairs in the Titanic. But they all want to, to, to do the same thing. I mean, look, close your eyes, and it's, it's Groundhog's Day. It's just like when the Raiders left the first time from, for Los Angeles. They wanted to try eminent domain. The A's came to Oakland. They were called the Philadelphia Athletics. They came to Oakland and became the Oakland Athletics. Now Oakland thinks that even though there's precedent, that they can stop precedent and keep the name. I mean, the only person who would say that I think would be Noel Gaio. But I don't actually think the city itself is stupid enough to stick its head in that figurative noose twice. Okay? If it is then we need to turn the entire political system upside down via recall and start all over because that would be a gigantic waste of taxpayer money on top of how the city treated my friend Phil Tagami with respect to the Oakland bulk and oversized terminal that he won the competition to build and the city discovered the coal market to fuel money to it because the city didn't want to subsidize it. Not, they didn't want to subsidize. They have nothing to do with coal. Well, that was part of it, but they didn't. They, they should have subsidized. In either case, hey, look, we'll subsidize it, and you don't do coal if you really thought about that. But they didn't think about it because Tom Steyer came along and put money into their political coffers, and that's when they changed their mind. Everything turned around, and all the legal work got really screwed up and made them look really, really bad in court, and it continues to make them look bad in court to this year. But I digress. Um, Eric says... Uh, uh, it didn't happen in Cleveland. That's a big, okay, that's a big misnomer. All right? it There was no court case in Cleveland that had as its verdict, hey, you do this. You need to read that thoroughly. That happened because Michael White, the mayor of Cleveland, came to a negotiation on his own. It happened because Art Modell, the owner of the Baltimore Colts, was just torn up over what he was doing 
and was emotional about it. He didn't want to move the Colts, but they were treating him like crap. The city of Baltimore at the time, okay? So that was a very unique set of circumstances around which that happened. But don't say, oh, that happened in Baltimore, because that immediately says you didn't read the history of it. You read it, regardless of what you want to have happen. I say it to a lot of people here. You might want to have that happen. But reality is going to point you in another direction. I got Andy Dolich in three minutes. I'm going to shift over. Join me there. I'm ending this broadcast stream right now.